Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we'll be going back into the Expanse universe with a new novella that is titled The Sins of Our Fathers. It was released in March of 2022. It was written by Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham under the name James S. A. Corey and it takes place in the Janna system on the planet Janna after the events in Leviathan Falls. You could do me a favor and if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. Give us a like, drop us a comment, and now, the sins of our fathers. The monsters always came out at night. You would hear their calls, and some of their calls would be so deep that it would be felt instead of heard. No one knew where they hid during the day. No one was able to find them. As soon as the moon started rising in the west, they would start making their noise, and then they would come. Leeward figured, that they would aim for the breach the same place they came through the last time. But Handro, the construction chief, wasn't sure, so he asked Philip Nagata for his opinion. Philip was afraid, but he didn't let anybody see it when he answered that the wall didn't slow them down even when it was intact. The town of Beta was on their own. The main town, Alpha, was 7,500 kilometers away. It had a thousand people in it, but since the gate shut down, Nobody's heard from them. There was about two dozen people along the north wall and another group along the east wall with runners and lookouts along the west and south. They were looking to herd the monsters around the town. They couldn't kill them even if they wanted to because they were out of rifle cartridges and reagents that was needed to print new ones. They had one weapon, a magnetic slug thrower, just in case they broke through the walls into the town. Philip wasn't too happy. He was supposed to be on a three-year job, but now it looks like he'll be stuck here for the rest of his life. So Philip and the rest of them got to the wall and waited. Once they heard the heavy footsteps getting close, they lit their torches. When the first one finally got towards them, it was taller than a building. It had a small head with four eyes, two in the front and two on the sides and its mouth was curved upward like a grin and it headed straight for the wall paying no attention to the humans with the torches in front of it they rushed forward and put the torches in its face and it slowly began to angle away until it was parallel with the wall once it got past the wall it turned again and began heading in its original direction when the second one showed up people was out of position and a lot of their torches were out it knocked down the wall and kept going. Hamdro listened to hear if the slug throw was going off. When he didn't hear it, he took Philip's torch and headed into town after the monster. He had turned the torch handle into a spike and Philip chased after him. By the time Philip caught up, Hamdro was on the monster's back, hitting it with a spike. As Hamdro jumped off the monster's back, someone got the slug throw to work and he began shooting at the monster. Philip was impressed with what Handro did. He had helped kill the monster. The Janus system had six planets. Two inner ones were habitable and the four outer ones were all gas giants and they were surrounded by a asteroid belt. Half a dozen entities tried claiming the two habitable worlds until a disagreement broke out which resulted in a small nuclear war and corporate lawyers and union administrators spent most of the next decade fighting over the system. Then the Laconian Empire came and took over and awarded it to the Emerlin Voss Minerals and Financial Holdings Company. Philip and his supervisor Mosi lived in what was supposed to be a temporary barracks. The third member of their team, Diesiete, was back in Alpha and has not been heard from. Alpha and Beta held the entire human population of the planet and the majority of the people in the system. Philip had heard that there was a prospector ship on one of the water moons of the second gas giant and if that was true he figured they needed to get back to the planet as quick as they could because the only people left were the ones on this planet and there was less than 2,000 of them. After Philip finished breakfast he checked his hand terminal but it wasn't working and it didn't have any replacement parts. The fabrication lab could have built some, but their supply of reagents wasn't deep and he really didn't need a hand terminal anymore. Philip has been on seven different worlds and Jenna was the one whose skies changed the most. On some days, the sky was so dark you could see the brightest stars at midday and on other days, it was a pale olive. 
Now that it was daylight, he could see the damage that the monster did. It had flattened the storage building and the machine shop. He went over and joined Mosi, who was coordinating the salvage crew at the machine shop. Other members of the crew was Kofi and a woman whose name he didn't quite remember. It was either Alia or Adalia. The scientist was doing an autopsy on the dead monster. Apparently, last night, the slug thrower had misfired, so they had to bring it up from the battery. As he and Mosey were speaking, a woman who did their intake interview when they got here from Alpha came over to them. Everybody called her Nami V because they couldn't pronounce her Russian name. She told them that a meeting has been called for tomorrow after dinner and they were going to talk about the monsters and what they're going to do next and they want everybody to show up. Mosey replied to her, that he and Philip were subcontractors and were not permanent, but she insisted that they show up anyway. After she left, Mosey told Philip that they're not going, that if extra meetings haven't been cleared by the union, then they don't go. When Philip replied, union, you gotta be kidding, Mosey got angry and he said that we're union, that's the way it is. All this other shit doesn't change anything unless we let it. We are not going to let it. Philip didn't think Mosey was insane, but he was heard shouting about getting things cleared by union officials when that was never going to happen. As if things the way they used to be had anything to do with how they are now. Mosey was 10 years younger than Philip and didn't see Philip as a threat and Philip wanted to keep it that way. So he didn't argue with him. After Mosey left, Kofi asked Philip if he was going to sit out this town meeting because of the union. Philip said no. For 40 years, Philip has been mostly using the name Philip Nagata. When he was working with his father, he was known as Philip Inaros. When he left, he took the name Nagata. Everyone thinks he's dead because no one knew he left before the final battle. Philip had been angry with himself and for a long time didn't know why. It was because his father was a terrible man and I helped him do terrible things. He failed his first apprenticeship because he was having too many panic attacks. After that, he began taking other names like Oscar Daxan, Tai Saint, and Angel Morella. But he always came back to the name Philip Nagata. When he was 31 years old, he remained Taya Saint for a year and a half and he was an official part of the group marriage on a transport union colony ship. Then one day when the chief mechanic retired, one morning soon after he woke up in fear, certain that because he had killed billions, they would come for him. So he dropped his identity and vanished, starting over from nothing. And that was the pattern of his life. He would take work nobody wanted, low pay, high risk, long contract. He signed on to ships where people didn't talk about their past. He avoided all talk about Marco Ineros, the Free Navy, or the bombardment of Earth. And he would always leave if things seemed to be going right. One time he tried reading about the experiences of child soldiers and the paths they have taken through the trauma of their lives and he couldn't finish the book. He descended into a panic attack so deep that the chief medic had to put him on medication. So he never tried reading that book again. His last ship was named Thomas the Rhymer, but everybody called it Rhymer. He would have still been on that ship if two things didn't happen. First, the EXO didn't like him, and second, a junior technician in Mosi's work group had a heart attack three weeks after they passed through the Jana gate. So they needed a replacement, and Philip needed to get off the ship until the EXO had turned his attention somewhere else. And the gravity on Jana was light enough so that Philip could stand it without getting circulatory collapse. He, Mosi, and Diaz Yete had delivered a solar power array to Alpha and spent a few months setting it up. And then Diaz Yete stayed in Alpha while Philip and Mosi went on a shuttle to Beta to set up the whole thing again. It was while they were on Jana that news from the rest of the systems came in. The attack in Laconia, the loss of the Medina station, and the losses of consciousness where everybody's minds turned off. But it was when they were at Beta that that strange mind merger thing happened. He couldn't remember much about that period. But when they came out of it, the gates were dead and the Rhymer was 
not in the system and wasn't scheduled to get back for some weeks yet. Then someone on the astronomy team saw the ring falling sunward. No one on Jana knew why and they never would. They would have to survive here alone. The damage to the town was repaired as was the breach in the wall. The monster's body had been taken away and the town kitchen had handed out bowls of riced tofu and black sauce which was some of their last supply. The bowl could probably be eaten since it was made of hardened, vat-grown kelp. Handro had become a hero since he had fought the monster and they were all waiting for the town meeting to start except for Mosey who wasn't there. Nami Ve was running around talking to everybody like a politician. When she came up and thanked him for showing up, he made an excuse for Mosey. Leeward brought the meeting to order and began telling them that the area that Beta sits on was selected because it was the best place for a town in that area. But it also happens to sit directly in the migratory path of many local animals. So the monsters aren't trying to kill them, they just build their town directly in their path. So he is proposing that they move their town to a site that's nearby. Handro stood up and said that it was a bad plan. So Nami Ve stood up and asked Handro what he was thinking, that this is what the meeting is for. He goes on to say every time they break everything down and put it back up, they are risking breaking something, just wear and tear. He feels they should stay in place and work on hardening their defenses instead. Someone else pointed out that the new site will have everything they need for the near term. It was close to midnight when the meeting broke up and Nami Ve said that they would hold a vote in the morning. When Philip got back to the barracks, Mosey was waiting on him and Mosey said, you went to the meeting? Philip said, yes, I told you not to go, but you went anyway. Philip said, yeah. Mosey then said he's going to have to report this. Then he asked about the meeting and Philip told him. And Philip was sure that in the morning they were going to vote to move the town. The next morning the vote passed. And while Nami Ve, Leeward and some civil engineers went off to take a look at the new site, Mosey and Philip, who were the only power experts in town, got ready preparing the packet reactor for shutdown. When they were finished doing that, Mosey went over to help with the medical bay equipment while Philip went over to help with the food production units. Philip had to pause in his breakdown while everybody went off to see if they could find carts to carry the stuff in. He went to see what Mosey was doing and Mosey was talking about when the people from Alpha get here they're not going to see the town and talking about when they get back to Alpha. Philip did not respond because he knew that Mosey knew better. Philip heard some people talking and doing something over by the wall, so he went that way to see what was going on. It turns out that Handro had his people digging a ditch around the town and fortifying the walls. Philip asked Handro that the plan was that we move the town, right? And Handro replied, that's a bad plan. Better we do this. Philip thought about what would happen if he turned this into a confrontation, but thought better of it and walked away. He then went over to where Mosey and Kofi was talking about the future. Kofi was saying that everything is running out and that even if they get everything they need where they don't starve to death, they're still going to need to make babies because Beta has no kids and without kids, you don't have a future. Mosey didn't want to hear it. He was still talking about Alpha getting in touch with them. Later that evening, when Nami Ve and others got back, Leeward got into an argument with Handro. Leeward was upset that Handro's people hadn't finished breaking down the town so they could leave and Handro told him it was a bad idea and he's not going to let the town get killed doing something stupid. He then tussled Leeward's hair and walked away. Philip knew what would have happened in the old days. A call would have been put into headquarters and Leeward would have had his plan backed and Handro would have probably been booted off the planet. But now, there wasn't any process for Leeward to go through, just power. Later, Mosey was complaining that the food was crap and that they were out of sauce. And Kofi told him that the chemistry group was looking to see if they could harvest some local organisms that won't taste bad or kill them. Mosey said he wasn't going to eat any alien stuff, he's just going to wait for Alpha to come with stuff. 
That's when Kofi told them if there's an alpha, they've been down a long time. And if they didn't eat all their stuff while we're eating ours, it isn't like they're gonna get supplied. That made Mosey angry. He cursed him and walked away. After he had left, Kofi and Philip began talking, wondering if Bader had the only people left. There was no way for them to know. That night, Philip couldn't sleep, so he lay there thinking about Handro, about Beira, and about his father. Finally, he gave up, got up, and went for a walk, and listened to the sound of the people in the town, and that Beira's mission was to survive. When he got back, Mosey was already asleep, and he went to sleep and dreamt about his father. The next morning, while Philip and Jackson were putting back together the food production unit that they had started taking apart the day before, they got news that they found where the monsters sleep during the day. It turns out that they were all over the valley, to the north, to the south, everywhere. After the others had left to go take a look at the defenses, he heard Leewood arguing with someone. It turns out he was arguing with two men for maintenance who was trying to take his cart. It took Leewood a little while to realize that in order to stop them, he'd probably have to fight them. When Leewood reached for the cart again, one of the men pushed him and he fell down. That's when Philip stepped in and broke it up. Jackson came in just in time to back him up. After the two men were gone, Jackson warned him not to get involved. That's when Philip stepped away to go and see Nami V in her office. He told her what happened and she asked if Handro was there. He told her that he wasn't, but that's how people get. And if it sets in, you won't get it back. She said she hears him and she'll take it seriously. And he asked her, is that going to be enough? And he said, does Handra still listen to you? You used to have pull, but you had the company behind you. I had the union. We had, now is he going to listen? Philip goes on to tell her he doesn't think she understands what he is. He told her his father was like that, strong, certain. People loved him and wanted him to love them. They wanted to get a piece of his confidence and they would do terrible things so that he would notice them. The last thing he told her was that this hand your problem isn't going to go away and she said she knows. Once he got back, Mosey was upset with him, wanting to know if he's getting them involved with these people's problems. He told Mosey that they were going to be here a while and their problems won't stop with them. He goes on to say he knows men like Handro and that people will start falling in line behind him and bad things will happen, the worst of things. He goes on to say that we're at the start of something here. We can't let it slide. If it's okay now, it'll be okay forever. If you plug the leak when it's small or you'll suffer when it's big. He then said he saw a problem and he took it to administration. But these are not the kind of people who know what to do with this. They are gentle. Then Mosey gave him an order saying, I'm telling you as your supervisor, we stay out of the local drama. We're putting in time until we can get back to Alpha. So Philip tells him, I when I tell you to fuck off, when I tell you your rules don't matter anymore and I do what I want, then what? He then said, don't mistake me for one of the gentle locals. Mosey told him, you're out of line before walking away. It was raining when Philip went to see Nami. Both Leeward and Handro was there. Nami asked him what he saw happen between Leeward and Handro's guys. So he repeated the story. At the meeting, it was obvious that Nami was trying to keep the peace, but it was also obvious that Handro had won. When he got back, Mosey was there, and he was drinking some homemade gin that one of the biochemists made. Then he apologized and admitted he was in denial that nobody's coming, no ships, no shuttle, the gate's gone, whatever happened at Alpha, they'd have gotten the radio back up by now, where all there is. He goes on to say he's afraid of breaking something, because what if he messes up and they need that item later on? He goes on to say, for this to work, a million things have to go right. For it to fall apart, just one of them have to go wrong. One thing wrong and we'll all die. We're all there is and we all die and nobody even knows. Philip replied, what scares him is that what if they fuck up and we don't die? What if they fuck it up and live? Then we end up with the same problems that we had before. He waited until Mosey was asleep. Then he left. He made one stop on his way to the maintenance barracks. He had come to see Handro. One of the people who were in there with Handro was Kofi, who didn't acknowledge him. He told Handro he had some things on his mind. 
when Philip got in and sat down, he recognized the people around Andrew. He could almost see them as the same people that was around his father. When Andrew asked him if his boss told him to come, he said no, he was just following his conscience. Philip then said he has something else, something to help. And with that, he pulled out a little red box out of his pocket. He then said, you remember how the slug thrower failed that night the monsters came? They had to cycle the capacitor. Kofi confirmed that that was what happened. Andrew became interested because that was the night he became a hero. Philip told him, this is a capacitor from the yeast tanks. Take a look. And he tossed it gently to Andrew. He told him, open the back plate and you'll see what I'm talking about. And as Andrew did so, it discharged and his leg popped open and he fell over, his eyes empty. Philip said, it kills monsters. Then he left, but before he had gone 30 yards, they had caught him. He was in an improvised jail cell and he was pretty sure that one of his ribs were cracked and his left wrist was swollen pretty badly. They had given him a good beating. Then 18 hours later, Nami Ve came to see him. She told him that Andrew had died and he is now officially a murderer. The first thing she asked him was what were you thinking? He said it had to be done but no one else was going to do it. She told him it didn't have to be done. He said, I know men like Andrew. He showed you what he was, he showed us all what he was, and he got away with it. He went on to say the town voted, but he was more important. You bent, you failed, you let him do what he wanted, and there was never going to be a path back for him. He would never stop pushing. So she said, so you decided that deserved a death sentence? And he said, there's a difference. You're going to punish me. I'm going to answer for what I did. He goes on to say, that's how it's supposed to go. You do something wrong, you're supposed to pay for it. They continue to speak with him telling her that she would have lost control over him eventually. He then told her that if he has to die to save her from all that, then he's willing. She then told him that she's not going to be the one to bring capital punishment to this settlement. And then she asked him if he can walk. She gave him some water and they left. She led him out of town and just outside the gate, there was a pile of supplies. They were exiling him. She told him that while the maintenance team wanted him dead, Leeward wanted to give him a public stipend and housing. He told him that he'd be banished for the next five years. And if he's alive after that, or they survive that log, he can petition to be let back in. He thanked her and told her he'll go. She asked him if he has a plan. He said no, maybe he'll try for Alpha. It's a long way, but there are supplies there, maybe people. If not, he can find out what happened to them. Before he left, she told him that she was going to do everything she can to keep these people alive. She's going to compromise and bend, and there's going to be times when she wished he was here and Andrew was here. He left and headed south, following the river. In less than an hour, Beta was out of sight. He made camp and filtered some water to drink and watched the stars as they came out. Human had once been heir to and lost those stars. In the distance, the monsters began to sing. And that is how it ends. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment, and I will see you in the next video.